Good afternoon, everyone. This is Leanne from Of Love and Ship Lab and the founder of SubVet Sublimation Graphics and Tutorials here on Facebook. If you're catching us on YouTube, be sure to come join our Facebook group. The URL is in the video description below and it is also at the end of this video. Today is just going to be a quick tutorial in Affinity Designer on how to make junky striped backgrounds. This is part of a series of tutorials on different design concepts um, that all kind of feed into some of the current trends when it comes to digital graphic designing. I'm working with Affinity Designer on a Windows laptop today, so if you're using a Mac or the iPad app, some things might look different uh, than what you see on the screen, but all of the same features should still exist. To start, I've already got my document open, and I just went ahead and made this 3,500 pixels by 2,500 pixels tall and made sure I had a transparent background. Now, in our past tutorials, I have showed you guys how to use the various vector brush tools so that you can um, pattern them and create really dynamic looks for the backgrounds of your designs. We're going to be using that same concept today, and you guys are going to be really amazed at how easy it is to make these uh, grungy, um, junky backgrounds, as they're called, for your digital graphics. So to start, we're going to go ahead and switch over to our pixel persona. That At the top, you can see we have the designer persona and the pixel persona. The reason why we're doing this is because all of the brushes in Affinity either come in vector form or Rasta form. You can find your brushes by going over to the brushes tab. And you'll see that all of these ones are the ones that are currently available underneath the designer persona. When we click on pixel persona, we're going to get other brushes that are available. <coughs> the brush toolkit we're going to work with today is the sprays and splatters. This one already comes uh, in Affinity Designer. It's nothing extra that you have to buy. In fact, all of these ones that you see here all come already in Affinity Designer. And there's a lot for you to work with when you're trying to design different types of junky backgrounds. And then the Frankentune ones, all of these ones down here are ones that I have purchased. Uh, mostly from the Affinity or Frankentune websites, by the way. So we're going to go ahead and start by clicking on our sprays and splatters. I'm going to come over here to my paintbrush tool. 200 pixels, a little small, so I'm going to increase that to about 374. There we go. Now it doesn't matter what color this is because we're going to be adding a pattern, so this is already colored blue. That's absolutely fine. We'll go back over to our brushes panel and we're going to select one of these that we think will work best. Let's see. I think I'm going to go with this large spray brush. I have to adjust my brush size again. All right. And we're just going to click and drag. And this is going to give us just the base of what we want to work with. Now, you actually want to be careful that you don't go too far off of your design space because, as you'll notice, it does cut it off. <coughs> and then you get a little bit more square look than you're looking for. So I'm actually just going, I mean, this is fine for this, but you could always delete it and start over if you weren't happy with that. But we're going to be filling in this center part. So I'm going to go ahead and click the Fine Spray one next. Make sure I have my brush tool selected. We'll turn this up to about 200. And now we're just going to start filling this in until we get a nice solid middle. So we don't want to get too far on the outside because we still want it to have that, um, you know, that distressed grungy look that we're going for here. But we're going to try and fill in this center pretty, uh, pretty solid. And you don't have to rush, you just kind of, you know, hold your mouse down and drag it back and forth. Okay. So 
So we've now created two that are, we're gonna merge them into one. So we're gonna go ahead and right click them and group. And then we're gonna right click again and we're gonna rasterize it. And now this created one solid pixel layer. Now, of course we want more than one of these. If you wanted to do um, just the same style for each one, you could just right click and duplicate, but we want each, each uh, layer of what we're gonna create today to be a little bit different. I am gonna want this to be a little bit longer and skinnier, so I'm just gonna modify that a little bit. Now we're gonna click on this little checkerboard um, looking icon down here. When you hover over it, it says add pixel layer because we want to make sure this is a new layer, not part of our old layer. And we'll just pick another brush. This ink splatter one looks kind of fun. Click on our brush tool. We're gonna to change the color of this one so it'll be easy for us to see. We'll just go with red. And we will go ahead and increase our brush size again. Oh, you know what? This one's a little bit bigger than I intended, so we're actually not going to use that. So we'll just undo that one. Let's see. You can see how this brush looks. Sometimes you just play around with the different ones that come in Affinity and you find the ones that provide the texture that you are looking for. Now I'm actually, you know, doing this tutorial on the fly, so it's a little different. There we go, I like that one. So once again, we're just gonna kind of click and drag. We wanna give it a relatively solid middle with a lighter, looser edges. All right, that's pretty good. And now we'll just choose one more so we can create, you know, three different textures for this. I thought I had some grungy brushes. Oh, there they are. Again, all of these one, all of the brushes you see here, the pencils and charcoal, chalks and pastels, pens, markers, inks, oils and acrylics, gouches, sprays and sputters, grunge, watercolors, effects and basics. These are all part of Affinity already. So you don't have to purchase them. So I'm just gonna choose just again, one more texture. I generally like grunge nine, I believe. So make sure our brush tool is selected. We select our grunge nine. We're gonna give this one a different color yet again, just so we can see the differences of them on our canvas. And just gonna follow the same steps that we've been following, which is just click, drag, create a solid fill through the center and make sure it's loose on the edge. I'm gonna go ahead and actually increase the brush size on this and maybe not that big and just uh, add a little bit more loose splatter around the edges you can see it's kind of filling out nicely around those edges where it looks a little less solid all right now we've got our three different pixel layers which we can now pattern using digital paper or you can use different colors um, it's really kind of up to you so we're going to switch back over to the designer persona by clicking that designer icon in the top. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose some digital paper. So I've got the Serepe Mexican digital paper file folder open. And I think that'll be a good one to play around with today. So we'll go ahead and click and drag. That'll allow you to customize the size. This paper is supposed to be seamless. Hopefully it is. There we go. So I'm just layering it, layering it over the top so we can make sure that everything is lined up. And we're just gonna try and, this is not a very good digital paper. A good digital paper will appear seamless 
as you can see, this one does not. So sometimes when that happens, you just kind of have to play around with it. All right, so we're gonna now click and drag each of these into the pixel layer. So we can actually um, hold down the shift button and select all three and right click and group. And then we'll just drag that below and you wanna make sure it's under the word pixel, not the icon. Cause if you put it under the icon, it just becomes a layer below it. When you do it nested underneath the name, it becomes a layer in it. And now we've applied our Serape background to that. So now let's add something to our red layer. So we'll click on our place image tool again. And we'll go ahead and do leopard print because leopard print seems to go with everything these days. Now this Repe one I used wasn't the best choice because it doesn't have a good um, a good seamless background, but this one should maybe. I feel like uh, some of these digital designers didn't do a very good job creating their seamless backgrounds. That one's close. It's definitely better if your um, digital paper does line up as seamless. Try and make sure when you download them that they are seamless. A digital paper that's not seamless is kind of worthless, especially because a lot of them, you can't even resize them accordingly to, um, or when you resize them, they don't look as good. Actually, this one's just not. <laughs> Sorry guys, we want a seamless one and we're kind of failing. There we go, that one is seamless. So we will select both of them and just kind of shrink them down a little bit. I was going to say so we could add another one on the end, but I guess that's not necessary. So we'll right click while we have both selected again. And you can do that just by holding down the control button and clicking on each one, each uh, um, layer that you would like. You're going to select group. And then once again, we're just going to drag it underneath where it says the name, not below it, underneath the name of that element. And now we've applied the. Uh, cheetah or leopard print to our second pixel layer and now we'll just pick one more for our last layer and i think we'll go back over to our uh serepe folder um or maybe we'll get some glitter let's go with some glitter i don't know guys what kind of glitter are we feeling maybe some orange And we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna right click, duplicate, line up our papers. We'll just go ahead and make these a little bit bigger so that they cover that without us needing a third one. We're gonna hold down the control button, select both of our layers, right click and select group. And then we're going to drag it under that. Now from here, you can go ahead and rearrange your layers if you would like. So I think that this one is gonna look better in the middle. So we'll go ahead and move that and click on our other one and move it up top. And then I think that the one with the Serepe is gonna look better if it's forward, you know, on top of our other two layers. So I'm gonna make sure that it's on top in the layers panel. And we can actually make that a little bit bigger if we want. So it looks a little bit more dramatic, maybe make it wider. We can make our first one a little wider. 
All right. And just like that, you've created um, a swatchy background for your junkie designs. Now you can go ahead and export this as is. You can w swap out your dig different digital papers and you can make a whole bunch of these and you can um, sell them as just different types of swatch backgrounds or you can use them for your own. So it can be as simple as putting a sports team on here, which is very common. Uh, we can actually, let's grab one of my sports balls. I guess it's football season, so we'll go with my football one that I have on my website. We can put that right over on the edge here. We'll add a little text. You can actually make that two lines I think will work. And maybe make this football a little bigger and we'll tilt it a little bit more. And this is what a lot of these junky designs are. They're pretty uh, straightforward. Um, And you're, once you get that background, the possibilities are endless as to what you can do with different design elements. If you want to do something like this where I just put go team, but you want it to stand out, you can outline in white um, or you can duplicate it and then select the bottom layer, scroll down and select erase, and then go over to the stroke panel and add enough of a stroke. There you go. So you can see that it shows up uh, on your design and makes it so that the other part isn't blocked out. And then of course we can take this top one and we can really make this any color we wanted by selecting our fill. So if you've got you know, your sports team's colors, you can change that around. My school was the Patriots, so I guess we could do red, white, and blue. But you get the idea. And just like that, we have created a design. Um, and, you know, with these swatchy striped backgrounds, you can really do anything that your heart desires. There are so many different variations. You can put them vertical instead of horizontal. Um, but like I said, it's very straightforward. You don't need any special tools. The brushes that you want to use already come in Affinity Designer underneath the Pixel Persona. And yeah, that's about it. All you really need other than that is some digital paper. So these are very trendy. You can sell the swatch backgrounds as uh, a single design element for people to use, or you can use them for your own designs. And the possibilities are truly endless. I hope this was helpful for you guys. I know this was a quick tutorial, but uh, after uh, one of our posts yesterday, I wanted to cover this before we do how to put together uh, junky sports team designs. Uh, that using the marquee letters will be our next tutorial. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you.